So we're just going to get started. And um, so good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our webinar, How to Become Westchester Green Business Certified. And please know that you can submit questions anytime in the question box. There will be a Q&A at the end of the webinar, and we will stay on the line for as long as it takes for us to answer all of your questions. I am Danny Glazer, the founder and CEO of Green Team Spirit. I am joined today by my program partner, Scott Fernquist, who manages the Westchester Green Business Challenge on behalf of Westchester County Government, and Yana Petrakova, the COO of Green Team Spirit. Together we organize the Westchester Green Business Challenge and the Westchester Green Business Certified Program that you will learn about today. So you can see on this wonderful slide, um, and actually White Plains Linen just joined us as well, so we'll add them to the slide. But we're delighted to have so many wonderful and diverse organizations represented on the call today. So if you choose to join the program, you will have the opportunity to network with those on this list and collaborate to make Westchester County a greener place to work and live, and of course, your business as well. Next slide, please. Before I describe the certification program, I would like to provide some background information about the Westchester Green Business Challenge. I hope you guys can hear me okay because I decided to end Jim Law at this moment. Um, but Westchester Green Business Challenge is the umbrella organization under which the Westchester Green Business Certification Program was created. So the WGBC is designed to help all 5,000 Westchester County businesses to go green. It's a successful public-private partnership between Westchester County and Business Council of Westchester. The program began in 2009, and it's a direct result of the county's climate action plan related to green business engagement. There are 270 registered companies, half of which are active. That means that they fill out an interactive scorecard each year to track their progress in key environmental areas. The program also includes education and networking events. It is a free program that helps companies to save money, improve, improve the environment, and promote their success. Next slide. So these are the founding partners of the Westchester Green Business Challenge, the Business Council of Westchester, Westchester County Government, and Green Team Spirit. The Business Council is Westchester's largest and most prominent business membership association, and they have been extremely helpful as a partner in engaging Westchester's business community. Westchester County houses the WGBC website and provides all technical support related to the interactive online program. And as I mentioned before, Scott Fernquist serves as a, one of the program directors. Uh, my company, Green Team Spirit, uh, myself along with Yana Petrikova, we serve as the consultant to the program and manage it on behalf of the Business Council of Westchester. Next slide. Uh, these are our wonderful, oh, go back to our sponsors. These are our wonderful sponsors. Um, Con Edison has been a platinum sponsor of the program since its inception. And uh, we also consider them a very important program partner. And we could not do this work without their support. Um, Lexin SL Green is a silver sponsor. And the bronze sponsors are Common Properties, CW Brown, New York Presbyterian Hospital, the Blue Book Network, and Perno Ricard USA. And we are very, very grateful for their sponsorship. Next slide. So each year in June, we have an annual recognition event for the Westchester Green Business Challenge program. So we just had our fourth annual event, and here you can see the award winners. And it's significant to note that five of the seven winners on this page were um, in the pilot for Westchester Green Business Certified, including Rexon and HUD Library, Diamond Properties, New York Presbyterian Hospital, 
and, the, and Hilltop Hanover. Uh, Doubletree is on the call today, and we are actually doing an event this week at Colonial Needle at Energy. So we are very involved um, with all the companies here, and we're proud of their work. Next. So here, this is a wonderful list. You can see the logos for the active participants in the Manchester Green Business Challenge Program. They are a very diverse group and represent the business community profile in Westchester. Yeah, you can just run through those. Um, so all different kinds of companies, different sizes. Um, we have nonprofits. We've got hospitals, um, corporations, retailers, online businesses. Um, so it's just a fantastic group of companies in the county that are all working in their own way um, to become greener and more sustainable and contribute to um, a healthier Westchester County. So now I would like to introduce you to Westchester Green this Certified. The mission of WGB Certified is to help Westchester-based businesses develop and implement a formal program for environmental sustainability that delivers value and measurable results. So just in case that sounds daunting, um, really what our goal is is to help you um, to make this as easy as possible, to make it actually sort of fun um, to, to do this work because we know that every one of you is in business to do something else and that you're very busy but that you have an interest in sustainability and really what we're here for is to make that easy for you and to help you through your journey. Next slide. We love this slide. These are the 18 wonderful organizations that participated in the pilot of WGB Certified that started in January of this year. And, um, you know, we, it, it's just surpassed our wildest expectations. Um, it's just it's a pleasure to work with these companies, to learn about them. Um, each of them has something different to offer, and they've had the opportunity to collaborate with one another and share best practices. And um, all not all are yet certified, because that the time that it takes to become certified is really up to each organization. Um, they're all somewhere on a journey, and it's just been a fantastic experience. Next slide. So these are the first company, companies to become WGB certified, Blue Pig Ice Cream Store, Diamond Properties, and Rexon SL Green. So Diamond Properties is actually having a celebration this Thursday. They're having a ceremony for their certification, and um, we're very excited to join them there on Thursday. And this quote is just amazing because it truly sums up the heart and soul of what it is that we are trying to accomplish with this program. So I'm actually going to read it out loud, even though you can read it yourselves. Um, this is by Jim Diamond, CEO of Diamond Properties. It is such an honor to receive this certification as it depended on everyone in our office coming together to work towards a common goal, a greater cause that would benefit our community and set an example for tenants across our portfolio. Not only was this a fun and challenging process within our company, but it helped us to make connections and learn the best practices of other companies throughout the Westchester County business community. So I hope you'll agree that um, it's just a fantastic um, quote that he, that he made, and it really does sum up um, the spirit of the program. Next slide. So why Westchester Green Business Certified? So, you know, if yours is a company that is ready to take your environmental stewardship to the next level, we are here to help you um, set policies, take actions that will increase efficiency, reduce costs, and help you measure your performance. So this is a membership program, and we provide you with all the tools, the training, and support that you need to accomplish your goals and to get recognized for doing so. Companies that achieve certification, I 
I'm sure you will agree that will that the process is valuable, it's rigorous, but it's very, very meaningful. Um, so that those are just some of the reasons why. And now I will turn it over to Scott and he will take you on through the next section of this presentation. Okay, thanks very much, Danny. Um, Danny sort of presented the big picture of our program, and I'm going to do next um, is take you through the specific steps um, or the aspects or criteria for WGB certification, get into some of the specifics um, that you need to know. Um, just keep in mind, uh, we're presenting them as one, two, three. Some of these things do happen in parallel. It's not necessarily sequential, but um, these are the major components of becoming WGB certified. So I'm just going to walk you through each of them. So the first step um, is to become a member. So as Danny pointed out, this is a membership program. Um, we do actually have already on our website an updated membership form. Um, it's an agreement. It, um, there are some terms. It's a payment form, and everything is explained on there in terms of what's required of you. Um, the minimum requirements for becoming a WGB certified member is that you are a commercial space. Um, unlike the WGBC umbrella program, we are not accepting home businesses for this program for a variety of reasons. Um, but we are requiring that you have a minimum of 500 square feet. Um, so you don't have to be big. 500, you know, 500 square feet is not large. Um, we don't have any multifamily housing units on the call today, but we are open to um, those type of businesses in the county, and um, we require five units minimum. Um, you only need one or more employee. We realize in Westchester we have a, um, some solo entrepreneurs. They do have office space um, that would qualify for them them for this program, so they are welcome to join. Um, a big, um, an important requirement is that you do have access to your energy and con consumption and billing data. Um, my colleague Yana Petrakova is going to get into the details of our um, greenhouse gas inventory tool that members have access to. But in order to be successful and to track progress and to measure um, over time, you do need to have access to your energy bills. And also, it's 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 very preferable if you have access to water, um, your water consumption and data as well. The fees for the program, and this is an important thing to know, these are really special. The special offer for many of you, um, this is only valid for this year. This, we, we consider 2014 our pilot year, even though this is this next round that we're starting now in the fall is not um, the pilot per se. Um, but these are reduced rates um, available to you, and it's based on your company size. So if you're 1 to 25 employees, the, the, fee, um, the, the, the initial fee for the year is $275. 26 to 99 employees, it's 375, and 100 and more employees, it's 475. So we have really, um, you know, done our best to keep this very affordable and open to any business in Westchester because we don't want cost to be a, um, an obstacle for you, um, and we, we we hope that you agree that these are very um, affordable rates, um, the value, and we'll be getting an obvious work explained to you next. And there is a 25% discount for nonprofit organizations, and it's only for the first year. But something to keep in mind if you are a nonprofit, 501c3. Step two, um, and this is a really an ongoing step, um, it's to participate in our training sessions. So a really nice aspect of this program is that you're not left on your own to figure everything out. Um, we have organized um, a six-part training series, um, which basically follows all aspects of the program and the application checklist, which is what I'm going to be getting into next. Um, with the exception of our kickoff and first training session, which focuses on organizational commitment, um, all of them are held as webinars, like today. So they're very convenient, and that we, we, we've always held them around this time as well. Typically, we go 12 to 1 o'clock um, every few weeks, um, and we work our way through. Um, first session, as I said, though, is going to be live because we think it's important to get everyone in the room and to meet and to meet us um, and to network a little bit. So it's also a fun way to kick off the program. We do have a date for that um, session. It is September 23rd of this year. We're still working out the location, but we will announce that shortly. Um, so make a note of that. And also, and then after that, we'll be going through the different sections, energy, 
materials management, transportation, land use and water, and we'll have a special session on the greenhouse gas emissions inventory and we'll be able to help you and answer any questions or technical issues you might be having. Another thing to note is that we have invested in a great project management um, tool. It's actually it's, it's a collaboration platform. Um, it's very easy to use. It's called Basecamp. Um, we use this with our pilot companies very successfully. Um, it provides one centralized location for all program information and promotes collaboration between the companies in our program. Um, so you'll have your own your own little corner or you know section of Basecamp that you can where you keep all of your files and your information, and where we can communicate with you directly. You also have options to communicate with other companies in the program. And we're also available, of course, um, via email and telephone support if you run into any issues. So step three, um, or the next um, aspect of the program, is really the application and checklist, which we've put together in a significant amount of time, really last year, most of the year, um, revamping. Um, our original resource or scorecard, as we called it, for the Green Business Challenge. We fine-tuned it, we revamped it, we looked into um, a number of successful green business programs from around the United States um, to really um, develop a resource um, that is useful to you and you know as much information in one place as possible so that you're not sent everywhere. Um, we take a very holistic or comprehensive approach to sustainability. We're not just an energy program. We're not just a waste management program. We focus on all key aspects of environmental sustainability, um, and that includes organizational commitment, energy, materials management, which we break up into waste, recycling, and purchasing, um, transportation, water, and land use. So each section um, includes the key categories of policies, actions, and performance, which is related to metrics and being able to measure what you're doing so that you can identify um, opportunities for improvement, opportunities to save money, um, and it's, it's a very useful um, aspect of the program, which we'll get into later. We have built in uh, help links and resources for each action step for each thing, each required action for companies to become certified. So if you don't know what something is or you're stuck or you're wondering how someone else accomplished something, we have specific links built into the application so you can be taken directly to a resource, a case study, a definition, so you know exactly what it is we're talking about. It's a working document, it's a PDF, so you can save it at any time and you're also really encouraged um, to post your progress to Basecamp, which is the, the, um, the project management platform I mentioned. And we are very happy to provide feedback and guidance if you just want to make sure you're going along on the right path or if you have any questions, um, you can respond to you your way. So now I'm just going to go through very quickly the, the different sections I mentioned just so you understand what it is that's involved. Um, I'm not obviously going to go into every single action. That's really what the training center are for. This is just a um, little bit more high level. So for organizational commitment, it's really um, we have deliberately made this our um, training session and first um, section of, of, the, of the application um, because we feel it's extremely important to begin here, which is really all about getting your top leadership in your company or your organization to sign on to this effort and to understand the, the level of commitment when you want to become an environmentally sustainable company. So we've actually developed an environmental policy um, statement, a template, which you can review um, and modify um, as, as necessary for your organization. It's really the cornerstone of the, pro the program because it really sets the stage for your entire organization being involved in the greening effort because we our philosophy is that it, it's not an effective sustainability program if one person in the entire organization, regardless of size, unless you're a one-person organization, <laughs> is working on these issues. So we really feel it's important um, in this section of our, of, our, of, our, of our application really focuses on um, wide engagement, you know, communication, um, how to start a green, how to incorporate you know, some of these aspects into your HR, your training, your, your job descriptions, how to promote effective collaborate, collaboration with your landlord, if you're a tenant, and with your tenant if you're a landlord, and how to celebrate some of your green successes so you can really uh, move forward in the program. 
That's the first section. The second category is the largest section of our program, and we focus on it next because it is a major area for opportunity in terms of cost savings for your company. Um, as you know, of course, energy is expensive in New York, um, so we work actually directly with the utilities. We work with Con Ed, as Danny pointed out, Con Ed has been our um, sponsor for the past several years, and we work with them directly on lining up and making sure that you have all the information on their programs necessary so you can take advantage of the various incentives that they provide. Um, and so we have obviously direct links to programs, and they participate on the energy um, training session. So they, they are on the call there to answer any questions you have about specific programs, so that's very helpful for you. We also work with NYSERDA um, and other, other organizations that provide programs. Um, so this section really focuses on these categories, on um, performing an energy audit, on how to improve your lighting to make it more efficient, um, heating and cooling systems, all of your appliances, um, and, and renewable energy options. And there are performance metrics directly tied into this related to greenhouse gas emissions, your cost, usage, and activity. And Jana will get into that later, and she presents the greenhouse gas inventory tool. So the next section is materials management. And as I explained before, we've, we've divided this into two sections because it's a rather large section. So the first um, materials management section deals with waste and recycling issues. Um, again, there's a policy section. We provide a nice template for you. Um, there are 39 actions, 18 of which are required, and they're related to the topics of um, performing a waste audit, um, general reuse and recycling, so how to, you know, and we do actually work directly with the county's um, Department of um, Environmental Facilities, um, and again, they participated in our training to explain the issues related to the county's solid waste um, management law and the recycling laws, if you have any questions about that. Um, so that deals with electronics, um, how to deal with special materials that businesses come across and have, um, how to properly dispose of them. Um, we look at paper and office supplies, kitchen, um, kitchen waste, and um, also how to run green meetings and small events, because many of you do host meetings, and the question always comes up, you know, how do I do this in a more environmentally friendly way? And again, here there are performance metrics and, and things you can measure. Um, to help, to help improve your performance and identify um, areas for improvement. Okay, so the next is materials management, but it's focused specifically on the area of green purchasing or procurement um, because every business has to buy things, and so we want to give you tips and opportunities to do an inventory of your supply and what you're buying to identify how you can um, do it in a greener way and purchase um, products, um, green alternatives to many products that are out there. So this section, there are 38 actions, 12 are required. We look at centralized purchasing, stationary and office supplies, food, beverage, and catering, green cleaning and personal care products, electronics, packaging, and um, things like low VOC paints, non-toxic products, and you can integrate that into your, into your organization. So the performance piece of this is really conducting an inventory of your current purchases and assessing ways to reduce or switch to eco-friendly alternatives. The next section is focused on transportation. You know, your workers have to get to work. Um, you have to get to work. Um, so we look at developing a sustainable transportation policy and specific things uh, you can do to make your organization more supportive or um, how to facilitate um, alternatives to, you know, single vehicle, um, uh, single, you know, driver vehicles coming into work every day. So we look at um, commuting and how we can encourage carpooling, ride sharing, how we can um, reduce or improve your business travel practices to make them more um, sustainable, environmentally friendly. And we look at um, if you're a, a larger organization with a dedicated fleet, um, things you can do to retrofit um, and make your vehicles um, more um, fuel efficient, for example, and how to encourage green driving techniques. Um, one of the members of the pilot program and a great supporter of ours and partner is Metropool. So we do um, 
work with them directly, and of course their programs and their resources are available to you. We also work with um, the county's Smart Commute program, so we are taking advantage of all available resources around us. And really, a big advantage of this program is, and we know, you know, as business owners and organizations, you're really inundated with information about programs and incentives and opportunities um, left and right that cover all topics you know we're talking about today so what we really provide uh, we parse through it and we consolidate that information and we tailor it to you so that it's understandable um, and we hope that's really a service that we can provide to you and really put it all into one place so that you can deal with a lot of these issues um, as we say comprehensively or holistically as opposed to um, you know here and there so for transportation, there's the performance pieces, of course, as well, um, related to fuel usage, cost, usage, activity, um, so you can really track your performance and uh, over time see how you're doing, um, hopefully improve and, and save money. So land use is really focused on, of course, uh, we realize some of you are tenants um, in larger buildings with very little control or interaction with the land on which you're property sits and we acknowledge that so of course if some of these things are, are NA or non applicable you can of course indicate that in the checklist but we do um, this is a big um, issue in Westchester of course where responsible land management leads to a healthier environment clean water um, flood mitigation that sort of thing so we do have a section dedicated to land use there are 28 actions in the section, and 13 are required um, if they're applicable. Um, and, the, and the topics ra range from removing top toxin and, and cleaning methods, green cleaning methods, to, to managing your storm water, natural irrigation techniques, um, native planting, leaf and grass cycling, integrated management, and CSAs. So this is an interesting section. And um, what we found is that many companies haven't really thought about this as part of a company, as, as part of a sustainability program, and they found it very useful to um, to look at the topics as well. The so water is really so land use focused on part of it's focused on how you use water and manage water outside your property. The water section is really the difference here is that it's all about indoor water usage. So this really does apply to every company or organization in our program. And it's focused on reduction, conservation, developing a policy around that, and um, a combination of behavior and technology. So we look at conducting a, a water audit, um, looking at your water fixtures, um, how they can be improved, um, your washrooms or toilets, kitchens, cleaning and mechanical. So it's all related to, of course, um, your use of water. And of course, there is a very simple performance piece to this where you can essentially just track how much water your your organization is using and how much you pay for it um, to hopefully see savings over time. So that's it for me. Um, Jana is going to now talk about um, performing the greenhouse gas emissions inventory, which I've um, referred to. Um, but she'll go into some more detail so that you know what's involved in that aspect of the program. So thanks very much. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk now about the step four, about the greenhouse gas emissions inventory tool. So the tool um, has been developed by Green Team Spirit, and um, it is based on EPA guidelines and the greenhouse gas protocol guidelines. And um, it, this tool is um, in Excel, so uh, we thought that it would be a very familiar environment for everyone, so you don't have to um, learn any other new software. Um, the tool um, will provide you uh, your transmission for um, the uh, that are produced in your business operations. And um, it focuses on five categories, energy, travel, waste, water, and refrigerant. 
throughout the webinars that are mandatory for the sort of the greenhouse get, I mean for the green business certifications, um, you will get a step by step guidance on the tool. Um, so we will lead you through all of the categories individually in each webinar. So you will get training and you will get familiar with the tool. Uh, from the tool, you will be able to learn that where your resources are being wasted and you will be able to identify opportunities to become more efficient and um, you will be able to see where you are saving money. The tool also provides a basis for company sustainability reporting and other industry-specific third-party reporting. So this next slide shows you um, what data needs to be collected for the tool. Um, we will need to know your industry. Um, we ask you to uh, provide your square footage for your building and number of employees. And then we focus on all those um, categories that I talked about. Uh, for energy, uh, we will need at least, we will need your electric uh, data or your, well, we will need your energy, overall energy consumption. Then mandatory to be um, able to participate in the program, but we work with the companies to, to collect all of the data when possible. So for the energy, um, you will need to collect your usage and cost for electricity, natural gas, heating oil, and propane. Most likely you will not have all of these. Um, most of the companies have only electricity and probably natural gas or heating oil. Um, we also give you uh, sources where to look for the data, so we will help you through the process where to find the data. So this will be in your energy bills. For the transportation, we look at business travel, and that will include the road travel, that those are your rental vehicles, um, air travel and train travel, for the fleet, um, uh, fleet is those are your vehicles that are owned by your organization, and then employee commuting. This data will usually come from your business travel documents and bill bills, fleet maintenance records, etc. And we mostly need to know your miles traveled. For the fleet, we would like to know um, the fuel consumed in gallons and the cost of your travel. For the waste, uh, we collect data volume and cost of different waste categories, such as mixed waste, mixed paper, mixed recycling, which would be your plastics plus, and if you have, then also yard waste and waste. Um, the sources of this data would be your building manager, um, if you are not a landlord, but you are a tenant, um, it will be your building manager probably, um, also audits, waste contracts and bills. For the water, we collect data on volume and cost of water. You either have town water or well water, you may be collecting also your grey water, um, and this, this would be water bills. Another category, refrigerants, not all, all companies have refrigerants, but those are usually present in your air conditioning or if you have refrigeration and that would be the case if you are a store, like a grocery store or a restaurant, you would have some kind of refrigeration and you would be using refrigerants that actually cause a lot of greenhouse gas emissions. Um, the sources of these data would be your uh, refrigerant records, purchasing records, or maintenance records. And finally, we also um, want to look at your purchasing and your inventory list. Um, I know that some companies, like big companies, have a really large inventory list. Um, so in that case, we would like you to look at least at your most frequently bought products and look at the options, are you buying eco-friendly options um, and comparing your current product to the other maybe more eco-friendly options 
and we give you a sheet where you can do a calculation, and I'll show you that later. So the source of this data would be your inventory lists or purchasing records. Okay, so in the tool, um, we look overall, we look at your scope 1, scope 2, and scope 3 emissions, and that's um, based on greenhouse gas protocol guidelines. That's how we classify the greenhouse gas emissions. Um, if you're not familiar with this classification, um, I can explain very briefly. So scope 1 are your direct emissions, and those are emissions from fuels burned on site. So those would be your natural gas emissions or um, heating oil or emissions from um, fuels burned in the vehicles owned by your organization. Scope 2 emissions are indirect emissions from purchased electricity, and scope 3 are all other indirect emissions, such as fuel burned in vehicles that are not owned by your organizations, that would be your rental vehicles, employee air travel, employee commuting, emissions from your waste, etc. So these are examples of the charts the tool provides to you. Um, and on a summary sheet in the tool, you will see that we group those, um, all of those categories into scope 1, scope 2, and scope 3. So in scope 1, you can see your refrigeration, your fleet, and then the emissions from your propane, heating oil, natural gas, etc. Scope 2 are purchased electricity emissions, and scope 3 is the travel, employee commuting and business travel. Um, so we provide all kinds of these charts for you um, that you can use in your company reporting. And a good thing is that you can um, compare here in each chart five years of data. So you will see really what your progress is in each of these categories. So this next um, slide shows a sample energy data collection. So um, I'll show you overall scope one, two, and three, but then we really focus on each each category separately. So this is how you would enter your data into the tool. There is a table. Um, and this is an um, example of energy. So for you, we will need you to input your quantity of fuel used. So for electricity, you would input data in kilowatt hours. If you have natural gas, heating oil, propane, you would input those into the yellow fields. All the gray fields are formulas, so um, this tool uh, automatically calculates your greenhouse gas emissions from all these fuels. And um, on, the char on the pie chart, you can see the area where you are producing the most emissions. So in our example, there will be the red part, the heating oil. 41% of our emissions in our example are coming from heating oil. So you will see where you need to focus your efforts if you want to achieve the most reductions. We also have to collect data on um, your office space and number of employees because we, um, the tool also calculates your activity data, the, the CO2 equivalent emissions per dollar per square foot and per employee. So you can be able to compare this data period by period and get some interesting information. So you input this data into the tool for 12 months, for one year, and all of this data is then transferred into a summary sheet, and then you get all of these charts. So once you collect data for several years, you will be able to compare them in the summary sheet. Um, so there are all of these charts available to you. These are examples just for energy. So you will be able to compare your energy cost over time, how um, your 
um, CO2 equivalent emissions develop over time. Um, there are also CO2 equivalent emissions per square foot per employee. And the chart in the very right corner, bottom corner, um, those are total, that's total usage. So purchase electricity in kilowatt hours, natural gas, in terms heating oil, heating oil in gallons. Provide all these different charts, your um, overall emissions, your cost, your activity data, and your overall usage. So I'll just show you sample charts for each category. This was energy for transportation. You will see your emissions for travel, your miles traveled, your total travel cost and then the emissions per mile traveled. For the waste, we have charts for total waste cost and total waste in pounds and how that is behaving over time. Then uh, we have water metrics, water cost and water in cubic feet. Then refrigerants, again those would be just for the businesses that have refrigerants, refrigerants cost and the emissions. And this is a sim sample purchasing inventory form. So as I said before, uh, we want you to look at the product you buy most frequently and look at um, the cost and look at the eco-friendly alternatives for these products. Um, sometimes the eco-friendly product alternatives may be more expensive, but sometimes they are less expensive. And so we think that it's better to look at your overall inventory than just looking at individual products because sometimes something may cost more, but some, some other products may cost less, and so you can set your cost by cost reductions somewhere else. So this table really helps you to calculate the, the, the total of your costs and, um, and be able to see if you can purchase the eco-friendly products. Um, so um, that is that is all for the, for the greenhouse gas emissions tool. Um, as I said before, um, you know, all these charts are really good to be used in your company reporting. And, um, and because it's in Excel, we try to make it really easy, easy for you to use. Um, so we hope that it will be very helpful and that you will be able to really see the impact of your um, greening initiatives in these in these charts, and you will be able to see, you know, the progress and how much you are reducing um, your cost as, a, as well over time. So now I'm going to um, hand the presentation back to Danny, who will talk about the remaining steps for the certification. Thank you, Jana. That was great. Um, so, moving on to another section is conducting employee survey. All right, so Jana, are you going to take me through the slides or Scott, one of you has to? <laughs> um, I, I can. Okay, thank you. So, and just to put all this back in perspective, as Scott said earlier, this is a very holistic program. So, you know, one, you know, there's the training sessions, there's the application and checklist, which gives you detail by detail, step by step, um, you know, advice and resources on activities. So now this is another piece of this holistic puzzle, um, and it's the employee survey. So we created a survey for you that is ready for you to distribute to your staff. It will have your company or your nonprofit organization's name on it. And the purpose of the survey is for you to ask your staff questions about 
um, all about sustainability, and we, we go into how, you know, they're interpreting things generally, and then specifically um, for energy, waste, water, transportation, et cetera. And it serves as a wonderful opportunity to gauge their thoughts and behaviors and to um, involve them and make them feel good about being involved in the process. And um, they're the first ones who are going to want to jump and help you become more sustainable at work. Um, just, you know, circling back to what Jim said, that, you know, one of the things that Diamond Properties experienced, as did the other organizations, is this incredible extra um, benefit that comes out of engaging everybody in your workplace in the process. Next slide. So this is just an example of the survey. Um, so for waste, you know, here we go, you know, do you reduce, reuse, recycle, compost, any of the following materials, and they can check that off. Um, a transportation question, and which of the following areas of business travel does your organization promote sustainability? Um, and then, you know, something about commuting. So, um, yeah, and we also do use the survey to collect employee commuting information as well. Next slide. So step six and seven are the final presentation and verification. So we didn't want to give everybody this like, heavy duty, you know, final report to generate that would sit on a shelf. So what's happened is our companies that are to get certified have been putting together a PowerPoint and they're putting in pictures and just explaining the wonderful things that they have done in order to um, move along on this journey and to become certified. So you can go online, we're going to send everybody who is on the call the um, this presentation or you can find this directly on the website. Um, but if you take a look at Diamond Properties and the Blue Pig, they did put together their final presentations. and. Um, you know, and, and we're going to have an entire library as all companies get certified. We're going to load all of those presentations up onto the um, onto the website. But so it's really a wonderful um, celebration of and just a visual opportunity to see what these companies have been able to do. Um, so you're just going back to that one. So the, just to, to talk about, just Yana, go back one second. I mean, so the verification process, too, um, we do a very, very um, strict and rigorous job of verifying. So we look at the application checklist. Um, we look at everything. We look at the greenhouse gas inventory. We just make sure that everything was submitted and, um, and that a company has done all of the possible actions that they can within their um, that's feasible in order to become certified. And next slide. So I yeah, mentioned before they're having our first certification ceremony on Tuesday, on Thursday over at um, Diamond Properties. And you know, we will present them with their certificate. We've created these really cool window decals that can be used in storefronts or in office doors. Um, the final presentation will be on the website. Anyone who's worked with us knows that we're all about publicity because sharing your best practices everywhere that we can um, is wonderful for your company and for all others who are interested in following in your footsteps. Uh, the recognition event, this was the first time, the one that just passed, that we had um, you know, companies that were in the program at that event, we did make the announcement of the certified companies. We also had all companies that are participating in certification stand in front of the room and took the picture because we're very proud of all the companies. So it's an opportunity to showcase your leadership. Um, if you choose to, we encourage our companies to host industry forums, if that makes sense for you, and to share your wonderful work with your peers. Um, we're actually doing an event with um, Nonprofit Westchester so that um, our nonprofit company uh, organizations that have participated can all share their experience with um, other nonprofit organizations in Westchester County. Next slide. 
So this is, Diamond's not on the call, so they haven't seen this yet, but this is what they're going to be presented with on Thursday. Um, but it says, in recognition of achieving Westchester Green Business Certification through visionary leadership, organizational commitment, and the successful integration of environmental sustainability into all areas of operation, which we think is great. Next slide. So we would love for anybody to register today. Of course, we're here to um, answer your questions. We are seeking 20 organizations to join us for this next round. Um, the first event will be on September 23rd, which will be a live event, getting everybody together around the topic of organizational commitment and a great place for you to meet each other and network. Um, so in order to sign on, um, one of these registration forms, you can choose the one that pertains to you. Um, we will need to receive payment in advance and, um, and then get everybody started, get you up on base camp and, um, and get the ball rolling. So we are so excited about the opportunity to work with you and now we are happy to answer any of your questions. So I'm looking at the questions, and um, Tracy, you had asked, can we provide samples of what each of the six areas would entail? Um, have we answered that for you? I can happy to unmute you, or you can just type into the box. One one question. This is Scott. Um, was from uh, was regarding the PowerPoint and whether you would be receiving it. Yes, we will definitely be sending everyone um, who signed up for the webinar a copy of the PowerPoint presentation so that you can share it within your organizations um, and send it to whoever is necessary that would be responsible for um, making a decision about joining this program. So we will definitely send that to you in the next day or so. Okay, well, I'm not seeing any questions. And if you don't know, if you if, if questions come up um, during the review process or while you're reviewing this PowerPoint or after the call, you can, of course, email us. Um, best way to reach all three of us is through our Gmail account, and that is westchestergbc at gmail.com. Um, that is the easiest way to reach us um, if you have any questions after this or if you... Um, or wondering anything. Well, 55s, so we did pretty good on time, so mm -hmm. I'll call for any questions. All right, I think we can wrap it up and um, you know, again, we're here to answer questions. We certainly hope that you will join us on this journey. We're here to help you and, um, and look forward to hearing from you soon. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye-bye.